Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome to another Supreme Commander epic on this auspicious day. If you weren't aware, I certainly wasn't until someone told me yesterday. Nine years ago today, Faf booted up for the first time. Z Pilot commissioned the code, got players online, and it became a thing. And it's gone from strength to strength ever since. Uh, I've got a handy little slide that was given to me by our fantastic promotions counselor who I had a chat with yesterday, who's really got his business together. Uh, that slide detailed all of the different things um, that uh, you can do on, on our platform compared to the Steam game. We'll be going through that in an upcoming cast uh, uh, soon. But it really, it like, uh, I always run through the same things when I do the, hi, you know, you can come and browse our replay vaults and our mod vaults. But there is so much work that has gone into this thing over the years. And there are so many added benefits. It really is amazing. And I want to say a big thank you to everybody who's put work in over the years and continues to do so we owe you hours and hours and hours of worth of uh, entertainment um it really is uh, it's amazing i'm ne i mean i don't i can't think of another community run project off the top of my head that's lasted for nine years and has never actually looked stronger i think we're still breaking records on uh player base numbers all the time so it's awesome Anyway, enough of all that jazz. Let's get on with today's game. As I said, it's going to be a Supreme Command epic. It's an eclectic mix of Joes and Pros, and I don't do them very often, admittedly, because they can get a little bit, well, I don't really like maps typically with teams on one side all bottled up, so I don't do them that often, so often gap games don't get a look in. But they are an integral part of the FAF community. Lots of games get played on it, so why not showcase one for once? It's dual gap. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Chain. Oh, that's a bad sign of all of the days we get that horrible black screen lab. People say, Guy, why do you do that? Why? Because I'm lazy and I don't like to edit my videos. So it's all done live and these little quirky things go wrong every now and again. We'll call this Team 1 over here on the left and this Team 2 over here on the right. Going first for Team 1 in mellow yellow. It's Rafe. Here he is. And he's going UEF, a very sensible opening first land. Team member number 2 over here in vivacious violet. It's uh, Luli Peru going Aeon opening first land. Uh, team member number three over at the mouth. It's the Illuminate One, our first spiky space socialist of the day. Going cyber and opening first land. Team member number four over the ways is a Jukebox Hero. Going UEF in Pontiff White opening first land. Uh, team member number... Did I just say five? That was four. <laughs> team member number five. It's... Uh, oh, God. Zoldalio, but we're going to call him Dalio. There he is in uh what is that that's dijon the dijon green and he's going seraphim opening first land and last but not least in ferrari red it's momo uchiha god they're really making me work for my dinner tonight with these names i tell you uh opening first land and going aeon so that's team one what have we got for team one it was uh, one seraphim two aeon one cybern and two uef uh, checking out Team 2 in Halley Borange Orange down here. First of all, it's Gembler, and he is going Aeon opening first land. Team member number 2 in Burgundy Red. Moving forward is Robo Danny. He's gone Cybrin opening first air, our first air opening so far. Uh, next up, Francais in Baby Pink. He has gone Aeon opening first land. Over the water we go to team member number 4, this time Elephantine Grey. It's the Crow for Luck, and he's going Cyber in opening first air as well. Team member number five next in Cyanide Cyan. It's a live Pulsar, another Cyber, in, this time going first air, second, first land, sorry, second air. And last but not least, it's Sorcery chilling out in the middle of his base there on a cigarette break. And then off he goes. He's gone UEF in baby blue, gone first and second air, first land, second air, maybe. Who knows? But that's probably the guess and we've already got uh, an unending stream well it does actually end <laughs> it's right there but a long stream that was the word i was looking for coming out from uh lully peru lully peru a whole load of labs just pushing out right down the middle on towards team two i'm wondering if they're just gonna lie up against these mexes over here and hope some engineers come out well the first thing that is going to come out it's going to be the crow for luck in his ACU. So labs aren't going to fare too well. 
against that. Transport away already for Robo Danny. Coming out to grab these mechs in the middle, no doubt. Another transport out there for the Crow. Things are moving fast. And another one out there from Team 1. Quickly mention the teams. I haven't done so, actually, for Team 2. It was three Aeon... Th uh, sorry, no. Two Aeon, three Cybrin, one UEF there for Team 2. Game quality at 92%. So it's pretty much as balanced as we're going to get, which is what we like to see. Engineers offloaded at the midpoint. Uh, this one came equipped, this drop, with its uh, own little lab play so uh, on board a little mini ghetto gunship uh, coupled with those labs that we saw or a lab that came up from Lully Peru that is gonna knock aside those engineers that belong to the crow so no forward base for you sir that got to about 40% done on its build one of team two's interceptors there from Gembler locks onto it but uh, it's already in trouble thanks to its escort detail. And that transport will just about survive. 124 hit points and heading for home. Will it make it? It's anybody's guess. It's going to drop those labs off. Yes? No? Doesn't know where he's going in life. Labs out now from a live pulsar. Moving forward, trying to force back. Lully Peru's labs. And he'll be able to finish off that forward factory now that he's got his ACU out there. Assuming that's what he's going for. There it goes. So he didn't take that skyhook home. No, determined to stay on the hunt looking for some NGs. Does manage to offload those two labs and one engineer. Another transport out for the Crow as these guys all battle for possession of those all-important midpoint mexes. So vital to getting everything started up early on this map. Needs to get those engineers down to join the ACU and he does manage it. Loses the transport but manages to get, keep six engineers alive. One of them takes a little bit of damage when that Skyhook lands on top of him. Crow Blaps aside that lab. Will they finish the... Oh, it's not a PD. He's gone straight for a tracer. He's going to rely on the ACU to keep the engineers alive. How many NGs will survive? None of them. <laughs> Literally none of them. So the Crow's situation has not improved. Still up front all by his lonesome. But now at least he's got that land factory online. And that's starting to produce more engineers. So... He's going to be getting some build power up soon, but he is way behind the other tenant of the center here. His opponent, the Illuminate One, already on a T2 upgrade. 40% done there or so with three land factories operational. How are things looking on the edge up here? A live pulse up. Two land factories straddling those three mexes. Three mexes over here for Team 1, yet to be occupied. We do have Ali Peru up front with his ACU, but he needs to move forward and pick up those other three. Naval Yard operational for Robo Danny in the Central Lake. Taking a little bit of flack from that Thunderhead belonging to Dalio. And I'm going to get flack for not trying to pronounce the X and the L, but frankly, I have no idea how that's supposed to go. Lots of naval yards queued up in the center for Dalio. As the very early opening phase coming to a close, probably not yet. By the early opening phase, I mean the batshit crazy one. <laughs> the bit where there's no definition to each team's controlled territory. It's essentially just a constant mess of harassment all over the place. 
Oh, nice bombing run there. Snags a couple of engineers from Illuminate One. More engineers pumping out from these factories all the time. They really need to get some emplacements down, though. Mantis problems are arising. And there is a Cerberus turret in amongst the reclaim just over here in range of that comm now that is opening up on the crow. And that surely, unless Team 2 have anything hidden back here, that's suddenly going to be able to take that out. That will be a real death nail for Team 2 grabbing this part of the center at this time. Uh, early tech upgrades, paying dividends, a new Cerberus turret going up now. All of this reclaim soon to be under his control and the eight mexes in the center. Assuming, of course, that Robo Danny doesn't manage to break through against Dalio and assault this position from the sea with his naval units. Hello, cheeky transport. I'm going to have to minimize the scoreboard up in the top right. Trouble is with minimizing. I forget who's who. Wraith dropping four T2 engineers going straight for a stealth field generator. And that is not good for Sorcery, who's the closest player to that position and is com. Not out front. His comm is vulnerable to a potential tax snipe. Have to look back up on that in just a second. But things going very well for Team 1 early on in this one. Center under their control. Lally Peru pushing now. They're threatening to force back Pulsar. They've already forced out the Crow, who's gone all the way back almost to... The entrance to the main base. They're going to stop out in front of it. Engineers hurriedly building some T1 PD to keep that Mantis swarm at bay. Pulsar going to move his units back to join the engineers at the PD. Try and maximize the damage they inflict. Illuminate's going to try and intercept them before they get there. I'll pick off a couple for sure. Now we're starting to see those defences come online. How's that top right corner going? Well, yeah, there we go. Tack missiles going up. One constructed. Three more queued up. And look at that. What? What are things looking like? Are they missing anything? They probably haven't got great intel back there. That is what Sorcery can see. You can see there's no intel coverage on the top right-hand corner at all. They've really carefully constructed this snipe attempt. Actually going to leave that down just so we can keep an eye on this. So it's an unupgraded comm. 12,000 hit points. I think it would only need two TAC missiles, if memory serves. But uh, they're going to make sure and go for at least three, maybe four. Very, very sneaky indeed. Pulse up. Got a couple of hives, and now he's going for some Gunthers, some static artillery. Try and clear a bit of room, put some pressure on these middle forward bases belonging to Lily Peru and Illuminate. Now we're seeing some broadswords coming out as well from Sorcery, but you just get the feeling he's not going to be around for very long. Where are we at? We definitely don't need more than three, which is why you can see they've stopped building the fourth and they're just going for the assist on that third one to make sure we get 
gets tack missiles ready as quickly as possible. That's about to be two complete. So he's got two missiles loaded and he wants to get that third one and make sure. Now, have they got a read is the question. There's the scouting. They've already placed the marker down on the comm. They'll have seen those scout planes fly overhead, but they won't have recognized the danger. And here come the missiles. <laughs> Impound. Sorcery. No idea what's about to hit him. Boom, baby! <laughs> I don't know why it comes up, Control K. Sometimes it does that. Note to Dev, sort that out, will you? The notify mod. Because that was definitely not a Control K. Very nicely done from Wraith. Team 2 go a player down inside 15 minutes. 13 minutes, 20 odd seconds. Not a great start for Team 2, it has to be said. They've uh, fallen off in the middle. They're a player down. What's the team ecos like? Team 1, over 100 mass ahead at this point. From generated eco. Total eco so far, surprisingly, Team 2 is ahead, and that of course will increase when that base gets cannibalized and all goes to reclaim, but uh, oh my goodness me, core mass under threat as well from <laughs> from that base, and of course it's still got those attack missile launchers. In comes some spectres there from Gembler, who wants to take that out. First priority was get some tactical missile defense up. Three zappers ought to do it comfortably. Those engineers are going to fight to try and hold on to that. There really is little point. Not going to be building anti-air or anything like that. They're just going to keep firing those missiles until they get taken out. That was a solid, solid snipe. And a little bit of good news for Team 2 at last. Those Gunthers seem to be paying dividends. Pulsar going for a T3 upgrade now on his comm. You can see engineers for Lally Peru backing away from the midpoint. Where are those comms? So Lally Peru's comm is back there. Where is uh, Illuminate's? Do, do, do. Let's see. Ah, he's in the in the mouth of the river. I always like to picture you guys screaming at the monitors and your phones as you automatically discern the thing that I've lost and I'm looking for. It gives me, me great pleasure. I won't lie. A real zest for life. Ba, ba, ba. Looks like there's some forward momentum as well from Robo Danny. Backed up with a bit of floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty there from the crow. Dalio says that's far enough, my friend. Dalio with a mix of UEF and Seraphim units. He's got shield boats in there. That's going to be pretty horrible if that's allowed to get to uh, T3 Navy. Lots of Salem's rolling in for the Crow. Starting to get a little bit of expansion now from Team 2. The Crow moving his engineers back out to the midpoint between the center and his current forward position. Be a turn up for the books if uh, 
Robo Danny and the Crow can secure the lake. After the start that they've had, that would be good going. And the mass totals are fluctuating, but it does seem that uh, it's still round about a hundred mass differential between the two teams. Pretty substantial. Kill loss ratios showing Team 2 actually doing better, which is quite surprising. Don't know how it calculates it when you take out an entire base, an entire player with all of his units with a. Uh, a snipe on the comm, perhaps it literally just counts as the one kill. And look at that, this is the end of Illuminate One's position in the centre. Thanks to Gunther Spam from Pulsar up there and those Salems from the Crow. Suddenly all game in the middle. I haven't checked out Team 1 starting area for a while. Advanced RAS on the way for Momo. Control K'd all of his redundant T1 power facilities. Oh, hello! Nearly 19 minutes. He has a nuke launcher and he's half built on the first nuke. That could be interesting. Rass on the way for Lali Peru. Amazing what you can do on these larger maps with lots and lots of mass and uh, a position of relative safety behind these rocks. You can spam out these large, expensive projects pretty quick. So they're going to have at least one strategic missile defense up on that side. They'll want one up here as well, though. <clears throat> and they don't think they have one. I'll show you the uh, range on that SMD. That's it. Protects everybody on the south side perfectly. No SMD. Well, they read my mind. Airlifting a couple of support commanders out to get one up and running up here. The Crow's going to pull all of his engineers to assist. It's now a race to get that online before that nuke is ready. And they don't have a lot of time. It looks to be about, well, nearly three quarters done. Certainly somewhere between two thirds and three quarters. SMD faring pretty well. Ooh. Tinfoil Auroras sitting duck for that deadly artillery from that base over there. Ali Brew happy to just feed that. <laughs> Keep filling up units. In that parking lot for destruction. We got over here, interesting place to build the kennels. Now, of course, the rover drones can go anywhere they like, but uh, increased travel time and all that. There's a man who really doesn't want his kennels getting destroyed, hiding them away right at the back of the map. Strap bombers under construction, presumably for strategic missile defense sniping duties. That nuke has to be done. There it is, and he's going straight for the launch. Strategic launch detected. Where is the ping? If it's up here, it's probably their best bet, and that is not loaded. Which way is it drifting? 
it's going... No, it's dropping short. They could have hit the main base, but no. More concerned about the midpoint over here. There was an SND up at the front, but that's not loaded either. So that will connect. And that forward fire base uh, done so much work on clearing out the middle. That's now a pile of radioactive ash as well. That is a shame for Team 2. But do you know what? If it was a choice between that and the main base getting hit, they probably would have taken that. choice though probably down to uh, insufficient intel hadn't kept an eye on those SMDs, didn't know when they'd gone up, thought that forward one was the best bet, that would have been the one that was hastily put together torpedo bombers going after the cruiser Going to put some damage on it, get it down into the red. Robo Danny yielding the center now. Both these guys, these teams, sorry, pretty much sitting 50 50 in terms of territory. One vulnerable ion reactor left, though, after that nuke and tin foil invasion. Turns up. It's like the Vanu sovereignty invading. <laughs> Shout out to Planetside crew. Look how much damage that T3 Max is absorbing. <laughs> That's a lot of incoming fire. Yes, they're only T1 Auroras, but still, there's a lot of them. So, Pulsar has inherited the entirety of Sorcery's base. He is going to be the one on double eco. And if Team 2 are going to get back up on top in this game, he is going to have to play a big part of it, I feel. Gambler going straight for advanced RAS from completing the basic one. Robo Danny now pumping out battleships and hello, Tempest under construction on the other side of the river. That might open up the lake a little bit. Getting some nice to and fro action in the center on the uh, the water, and now this is a new issue for Team Two. Forget floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty. This is walky, walky, naughty, naughty. Our age-old favorite gender-confused destroyers emerging from the water. lobbing their plasma inland and at the moment there seems very little that team 2 can do about that there's a brave harbinger rolling out which uh, isn't taking fire yet it's going to get into range and uh, get noticed is he even going to get a shot off nope and that's actually a T3 HQ that's going to go down no more halves for the time being. And this has got another one back at base. No, he doesn't, I don't think. Build orders seem to have ceased there, so that's the last harbinger. Oh, and there's the uh, experimental we saw the notify message for earlier. Lully Brew turns up with a GC. This is going to be problems. Francais needs to go full French and back up. Not 
going to save anything in here. All these engineers are going to die. Horrible, horrible deaths. There's no... There's no air units or anything. No gunships that I can see that are suddenly going to turn up and rescue that forward position. We have got a monkey lord now operational for Pulsar. Cheeky little bit of penetration from the Vanu here. Just barging trees out the way as they go. Particularly eco-friendly. And lacking general weaponry. He had to send out the big boy to deal with those. And deal with it, it did most effectively. Torpedo bombers managed to take out that cruiser biggest threat against air and ranged attack on the ground, or on the water, I should say. GC taking out pretty much everything in the forward base and the base behind that was largely the Crows, I believe, with the exception of that radar and the land factory. He's not going to carry on pushing inwards, though. Is he aiming for the gap up here? Potentially. Didn't like the incoming fire from the Tempest, maybe. That's still an issue, though. Good lead on that. Strikes it cleanly. About 20-odd uh, foul off the clock on board. And now he's switching up to those Salems, which have been causing such a nuisance. Again, more torpedo bombers. Are the stalks going after at the moment. They're going straight after the tracers, trying to brush aside those anti-air emplacements. Take the edge off the incoming flak. Gonna get some wall sections going up here, maybe. Support commander for Francais. Just kind of chilling in the valley there. Now, those Tempests coming out to play. What impact will this have on this naval battle? The perpetual naval battle that is dual gap adaptive. Strategic launch detected. Another new gout. Where's it going? It's going over here. So that's going to be awful <laughs> for T2. <laughs> No defense against that. It's always been one of the issues I've had actually with uh, Core Sopcom. Not being able to defend the water. That strikes cleanly, taking out an awful lot. The uh, T2 Naval HQ for Robo Danny does survive survives comfortably. A lot of dead engineers in there. Which, uh, is it Black Ops that has the um, anti-nuke which you can build on board those large battleships? Because that is awesome. There should be some kind of Aegis cruiser or something that can shoot down shoot down nukes just so you can have some protection against your your navies against nuclear point defense I do 
feel very strongly about that. Everything should have its counter. Cruisers sitting off the coast over here. Vidalio. It's actually nowhere near the coast. <laughs> I thought the lake was smaller than it was for a minute. Taking pot shots at the uh, the galaxy over here. Now we've got uh, a harms up and running. So a lot of extra damage. Will it be enough though? Crow has submerged one of his Tempests. One that's taken the uh, the most damage. Using the other one for long-range bombardments. Now he wants to get that main cannon involved on that second one. of the focus. Another round of Storks in. Going for that bottom Tempest that's down to around a quarter of its base health now. Another Tempest complete though. Naval battle in the center. What's going on over here? We've got mass fab farms going up. Not starting on any game enders yet. 31 minutes. I mean, you could be seeing resource generators and whatnot appear soon. Certainly plenty of Aeon players. Ah, there it is. <laughs> A quick look in the chat and see how long ago they've mentioned it. Go para. Make para. Not a Scathis. So I think uh, he might have gone for Scathis first, but everyone said no, make para. Had a couple of uh, Aeon support commanders transferred over. Woo. Got excited for a minute, thought I missed a, a com kill. You hear that noise, and you always think uh, for a minute, what have I missed? But it started to support commander. And there's another one. Going critical. Look at this. Monkey Lord backed up with a megalith. Very little forward momentum on the mainland. Most of the focus of the combat seems to be in the lake. Both teams now crossing the million mass threshold. Sorry, the two million mass threshold. Team one. About 80,000 mass up in total. Scratch that, 90,000, isn't it? <laughs> 90,000 mass. Standard. Guile maths in employ. That resource jet is going up fast. 3,000 hit points of 5,000. He's got a lot of support commanders 
and they're all Aeon, so I think it's Francais has gifted him a sizable portion of his eco to help him get this up and uh, presumably once that's complete to build the next one that's usually the best bet you need redundancy because you can bet that the other team will be coming for that resource generator question is has it been scouted by team 2 are they aware yet of the danger well it is there yeah you can see it you zoom in so they are aware that's what they're doing they have game ender question well they've not all seen it somebody's seen it somebody's flown over tempest completes for illuminate another strategic missile launch under construction this time Fidelio. Now, what's that going to house? That looks like a very specific template for a very specific piece of kit. Because it's UEF, that gets me excited. We'll know what could be coming. Look at that point defense. That's ridiculous. Put amounts of point defense on that template. 39 T1 PDs. No teleporting snipey snipey for you. At least not there. <laughs> now check out the progression that Team 2 have made on the lake. They have been forced right back with a combination of these long range Tempests and the Galaxy class battleships. Solid, solid work. Considering how badly the early game went for them, Robo Danny and the Crow have done an amazing job pushing back against the Illuminate one. And actually, we never mentioned Sorcery got picked off, admittedly, but he was the lowest rated player in the game, along with uh, Rafe, yellow for Team 1. So if Team 2 were going to lose a player, you never want to lose a player. Avoid it, obviously, but if you have to choose one, you're going to want it to be the lowest rated player. So it was the best possible outcome out of a bad one for Team 2. And it's allowed them to funnel all that eco into an 1800 rated player in Pulsar who now has a resource gen up and running. That is complete. And that is all kinds of headaches for Team 1 now. He's going straight for a Zar. To be honest, all of these should be building other resource gens, heavily shielded and gifting them to his teammates. Large game 101 as far as I'm concerned. Get redundancy. Paragons up immediately. Oh, look. Experimental rapid fire artillery now raining in on Momo and his air production powerhouse. A few of those reactors will be chaining very shortly, all unshielded. Lambs to the slaughter. He's going to be able to spam those up pretty damn quickly. Going straight for uh, T3 reactors surrounding it to increase the rate of fire. He's got two donuts in the air already. Able to just spam these out now. He's just looking to try and overwhelm them. And there it is. He's building it. I think I might cry. Strategic launch detected. Where's that gonna go? Nuke out. 
from Jukebox. All of those power plants and those air factories in the center here for Momo taken out. And he's been building strats ready to try and make a run, presumably, at that Paragon. Meanwhile, the Navy in jeopardy from this nuke. That looks like it's going to land right on top of the Tempest that probably will be able to tank that quite comfortably. Losing just a, a quarter of his health. They've got to take care of that Paragon and fast. Multi-racial shielding going up surrounded it. It's not going to be easy. All of the T1 PDs in the world. <laughs> Try and keep it safe. There's the Scathis. He wanted to build one earlier, as we saw. And now he's going to get his toy, presumably. And he's got two rapid fires online. That's going to be horrendous. Stacking up rapid fire artilleries and then just the blanket shotgun of a Scathis on top. I don't know how Team 1 repel this. This is an awful position that they've got themselves in ultimate standoff capabilities from Team 2. That nuke launcher has had its last missile, I think. There it goes. <laughs> Don't take him out, though. I've always built a Mabel. They build it. Penis of doom. I'm sorry. I promised myself I wouldn't get emotionally attached, but it's so difficult. It's actually quite wrong. Getting emotionally attached to a large penis. And here we go. Attempt number one ending in disaster, I think. Support commanders have thrown up some Myrmidons right at the mouth. Doesn't even look like they're going for the Paragon or they were splitting up going for multiples. It's not ending in disaster at all. Are they broken through? Are you kidding me? Ah! What? That's awful. Oh my god. Fronce actually throwing out the GG. Should have built more air. What you should have built is a second bloody Paragon and I don't think you've done it. Why did you not build another one? It's the first thing you build. It's actually incoming rapid fire artillery from team one who've got their own Paragon up. How did I miss that? So the tables have turned, but there's a lot of incoming fire. Remember team two had two rapid fires up and he's actually not prioritizing the Paragon. He's going after the rapid fire artilleries. There's an SMD there. If that goes down, I wonder if they could snoop, sneak a nuke in. Oh, one rapid fire down. SMD down. Second rapid fire down. Have they even seen the Paragon? So now, broadsword incursion from Rafe. Only a couple of them left, though. They want to take out Team 2's rapid fires. One of them absorbing damage, but they're going to be running out of return fire soon. Yeah, there's nothing coming the other way after this one, I think. Will it survive? Oh my god, the last one. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No! <laughs> he got it. He got it on the last shell. Oh! Man, so <laughs> tip for tat. One paragon and then the other. That is glorious. And now there's more strats coming from left to right. This time from Rafe. 
but uh, he's not feeling great about his chances suddenly going to turn around in the face of that ridiculously large group of ASFs. Illuminate one can take that out. Is he going to have a go? Slow on the uptake there. Missed an opportunity. Lots of strats out from Illuminate one who's gone full air production. Oh, another Mabor. So we're going to have two Mabors potentially, although that's not guaranteed at all because of the huge amounts of artillery that everybody's building, but and that one's actually not being prioritized much at all. Instead, they've all switched up and dumped everything on the lead one up here that's further forward. Have we just lost someone? No, it's, it's just poor commander. A quick look at what's happening in the top corner here. Omni up the back. Very concerned about this air business. Pulsar's going full air production. Wants to counter. Illuminate one and his ferocious snipe attempts. Have they switched up? They have switched up targets. They've realized which one's now being prioritized and which one's nearly built. Going for straight into the middle. The border of the bases there of Dalio and Jukebox Zero. Getting three-way manufacturing support. And it's on 7,430 hit points out of 8,000. This one has been completely abandoned for the time being. But I'm sure it won't be left forever. Imagine it will get some love in a minute when this one either completes or gets taken out. But it's been taken out because that Scath is online. Oh my goodness me. That's so much devastating artillery another strap bomb wave in, in from uh, Illuminate 1 strategic launch detected it's going deep, it's going after the Scathis they've launched a nuke they want to take out the anti-nuke defence and they've managed it, is there nothing else in front that's going to defend against that this is brutal so the Mabel, the lead Mabel that was almost complete went down Thanks to that Scathis volley. And now it looks like the Scathis might be going down and just about everything around here as well. How much punishment can one area of the map take? Is that nuke? It's tracking in. Do we have anti-nuke in here? Yes, we do. And it's loaded. So that nuke is not getting through. Shot down. Scathis survives. It's not prioritizing a great target at the moment. It's all drifting over here. Do we need that many quantum optics facilities? I humbly suggest that that is excessive. It's giving them lots of information but surely that's drawing an awful lot of power it does allow them to keep constant eye on everything that's going on in the main bases of all the different players another wave of strap bombers in from Illuminate 1 they'll get a couple of bombs off in there most of them got shot down because of this bank of Myrmidons they're desperate to take out this lead SMD Team 2 needs to bolster that immediately, but they might not get a chance. Another three strats come in. Shielding just keeps it out. They're boosting the shields with the hives. God, this is absolute carnage. Another couple of strats. They're desperate, Team 1. To try and get another nuke in. They want to take out Scathis. Now, work has resumed on that back Mavor, but this has now begun to draw fire. Team 2 have noticed where the drones and the support commanders have gone. And it's taking everything, that bank of shields, the rapid fire, Aeon artillery and the Scathis. <laughs> it's only just rebuilt most of his air plants and uh, what have you is 
quantum reactors, and now Scathis is going to impinge on those. Uh, we haven't actually checked in on what's been going on in the middle for an age, because we've had this ridiculous standoff tactics exchange between the two teams. But it's very much to and fro. There's a lot of Galaxy-class battleships in here for Robo Danny. Got Illuminate One with a couple of Tempests over here, but you do feel that the lake is once again drifting in the direction there of Team Two. Checking back in on the Mavor. Shields starting to fail. New ones being constructed all the time. Just look at the anti air that Pulsar has built all of those SAMs to try and keep out these constant streams of strap bombers that Team 1 have been throwing at them to take out key structures. 64 SAMs in operation. One over here trying for another Paragon. No, they've completed another Paragon. So Pulsar once again with all of the economy in the world. Strategic launch detected. But the Mavor is complete. Now what's it go for the Scathis or have they seen the new have they seen the new resource gen? They've launched a nuke at the same time so they might be going for an SMD up front. There's not that many shields there. They could potentially penetrate maybe. I don't know if they will in time. Illuminate One is over the top of this base now with all of his ASFs and a couple of strats. Surely that's what they're going after. Looks like the strats are focusing in on the Paragon. That is their biggest fear, allowing that one to stay alive. And that's what they're going after. And the shields are down already. Another one of those. And that is history. No, he's killed Francais instead. France, who was standing right by the Paragon anyway. The Paragon's still alive with 700 hit points, but it won't be for long, I don't think. <laughs> there it goes. So, once again, they can't hold on to a Paragon for a second, but now the Mabel's about to go down as well. Did it manage to take anything else out is the question. Or will it manage to take anything else out? More support commanders going pop. Before it died, it retrained in on the Scathis. Shields just about staying up. We'll block another shot. Will that be enough? Down it goes. No, because there's some penetration even with the shield there. Tack missile battery set up up front there by Rafe. Launching in towards the rapid fire artilleries. Mass banks of zappers planned and going up as quickly as Team 2 can muster it. This is absolute bedlam. Another barrage out from the Scathis. And that entire area in the backfield that housed the Mavor is gone. It is ashes. And now it's switching up. Towards the center, Dalio under pressure. His base in bits. I just think that this is starting to go Team 2's way, maybe. It doesn't look like it on the ground in the middle up here. All of this is now under Team 1's control. It's allowed support commanders, as we just said, for Ray to get right up front and put this TAC missile battery up. But they're at a stage now, potentially, where they might just be able to sit back 
Oh, I might have spoken too soon. There's no shielding in here. So you're having power issues. They can't manage to get a, a Paragon up and keep it. Another round of Strap Bombers in from Illumint 1. Prioritizing that lead. Rapid fire artillery and that's surely gone. And another one. Focusing in further back on I don't know what because I can't see through the mayhem. Is it the Scathis? It looks like the Scathis just went down as well. So just when I think that Team 2 have got it all sewn up. And Luminate 1 takes a snipe shot and gets two of the three weapons? Or is that everything that they've got right now? I think that might be it. I think that might be the last of the artillery from Team 2. So Team 1 have bought themselves a reprieve, potentially. And look at the mass that Team 1 are pulling in. Have they got another Paragon up? Commanders going up. I hope. I hope I'm not missing com kills, but there's so much going on, it could very easily happen at any time. Unending stream of Zooies now for Dalio just pouring across the map from these T1 factories over here. Can't imagine that they will get much done. The battle for the lake has just fizzled out completely. Robo Danny happy to sit back at the midpoint over here and take pot shots at units as they come into range. No one is trying to force their way in to any bases. Definitely feels like Team 2 are in a much stronger position naval-wise, though. If they made a push, they might be able to get something done. But, of course, there's nothing to stop the uh, nuclear counterattack, and they don't want to throw away the advantage they've got in the water for the time being. This is why you need anti-nuke defense. Some, some kind of Aegis ship to shoot down nukes so that you can push forward with naval vessels and have them safe from nuclear attack. Or at least safe until those Aegis ships are taken out. But that should be the the hoop that the possessor of the nuke should have to jump, jump through in order to counter your navy. Just my two cents. Devs, make it happen. Do it! Add an Aegis ship immediately. Let the nomads have an Aegis vessel. I'm actually going to be looking into that, guys. If you fancy learning more about nomads, I don't know if it'll be for a couple of weeks yet, but uh, me and Exotic Rita are one of the uh, devs behind the uh, Nomads production. For those of you that don't know, Nomads are the fifth race. You can only get here on FAF. Completely designed in-house by our, our players. We're going to be doing a little bit of a, a dual cast at some point. Just kind of more of a talk, kind of conversational piece, I think. Over the top of a replay, we'll go through some of their strengths in their units. How best to play them. Revenants. They've done so much damage from Illuminate 1. Tied up over here, trying to keep Danny at bay, who's finally unleashing these battleships. Going after that Tempest, along to Dalio. Probably Zildalio, isn't it? Or Zildilo? I don't know. Answers on our postcard, or in the comment section below, if you know how you're meant to pronounce that one. Check this out. So the support commanders that build built the banks of TAC missile launchers. Nice close range shot. 
They've built a whole load of T1 land factories and are now just spamming Lobos up through the gap trying to cause some problems for Pulsar. Pulsar's trying to take all this out now with a Megalith. Finds himself in range of a lot of Ravagers though and that Megalith in the red at 30,000 hit points and falling has taken care of the attack missile batteries. Got a monkey lord from Danny pushing north to help seal this gap. Once that gets up there, this Lobo ploy will be at an end. Megalith down to 23k. And another attempt to get a Mavor up. Another attempt that looks like it's going to fail. Rapid fire homing in on it. They're going for less ambitious projects. Trying to get a duke up now, but that's immediately under fire as well. Just can't seem to get ahead, Team 1, in this standoff game. There's so much artillery raining down on them once again. What have we got here? Rapid fire. Scathis back up and running. One more support commander. There's some solaces back here for Lully Peru. Hoping, I'm guessing, to try and get back here and pick off a com. T3 torpedo bombers. More strats inbound. Combined Wraith and Illuminate one. Predominantly Illuminate though who's been so important that he needs to get a, a snipe. Just Someone can work out detect. how to take out Pulsar. This game collapses for Team 2 very quickly. They're going after the SND once again. They've launched the nuke already. They like to do that. The shields are gone and so is the SND. Where was the ping? Was I think it was there. That might survive. SMD up here is gone. Assuming nothing across the river or further back intercepts the nuke. 52 minutes gone. T1's base on the southern side of the river though looking thinner all of the time and that's going to connect. Is it going to take out the rapid fire? Yep. That's a bloody good shot. Very nicely placed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mechs is down and out. But a whole load of mechs is down there as well. The Dalio. Everyone's so support commanded up though, their entire economy is mobile at this point. But there's so much incoming artillery fire, they're just not going to be able to keep anything operational for long enough. It's just going to get taken apart. That Scathis in conjunction with the rapid fires has been devastating. Targeted tactics from Illuminate One and others on Team One of Strap Bomb Rush, Nuke, Occasional Artillery has been very, very useful at tying Team Two up, but it has not got them ahead in this game for some time. Loads of cruisers blocking against the cliff edge there, against any... Ah, oh, the Solaces have been caught out and picked off. So no snipe attempt there. Well, there's a few more over here. Two or three left. And now the Scathis is retrained north of the river. And Wraith and Lully Peru are feeling the effects. Is that... Double Scathis. 
know, it's just a lot of projectiles coming off Robo Danny's fleet in the middle for a minute. I thought, my God, there's another one up south of the river on Team 2. But no. Just devastating. Absolutely devastating. Luminate 1 with power issues. Shields blinking on and off. Not what you want at this time. Tempests from Danny. Sorry, not Danny Crow. Threatening to breach into the mouth of the river. Lots and lots of Vespers coming out from Momo. Prioritizing those cruisers. Torpedo bombers out en masse from Gembler. Locking onto those Vespers. Surprised they haven't uh, spent more time actually. I mean, I completely understand where they've been focusing the Scathis and the rapid fire on before trying to take out opposing artillery, but huge target priority for me would be Illuminate One. He has been absolutely integral to keeping Strategic Team One in it with his detect. strap bombers and his air power. We need to new to him immediately but a missile based nuke Strategic two of them detected. in fact out or to clean out this river nicely those two tempests unlikely to survive I'd say all of these vessels certainly will not wham to the first nuke wham to the first nuke it disappeared why didn't that detonate? A nuke just disappeared. Answers on a postcard if you were tracking that first nuke and know what happened to it. It just disappeared. 55 uh, minutes and like 45 seconds or something. A luminous one. Base is in pieces. It really doesn't matter. Here he sits. There he sat. Control K. Or artillery to the face. You decide. So. Team 1's 2000 rated player. Uh, MVP. Is out. It's actually a lot of Atlantis. <laughs> That's an awful lot of Atlantis pouring out of the mouth of the river there from Dalio. But uh, you just get the feeling with that Scathis, it's all irrelevant. So very brutal. What's going on up here? So Jukebox has moved his comm right up to the top left. <coughs> Providing himself a shelter. And a support commander drop north of the mountain range as well. Start building anti-air up there. going out from Lully Peru. I think it's all dawning on Team 1 that that is game. Their bases are gone. They're throwing what last ditch efforts units they've got out at the enemy but when they run out that really is it. They will not be able 
to keep going. So many support commanders down here. And they, that's half done on a Paragon, nearly 60%. As that is trained, that Scathis is trained on it. Double Scathis, sorry, sorry. No wonder. Another rapid fire on the way. Did he get another Paragon up? Who knows, quite honestly. Yeah, two Paragons got taken out. It's that combined eco, the fact that he got, on, got to sit on two base early on again makes you wonder that early ejection of sorcery the attack missile snipe from Rafe though a beautiful piece of strategic thinking did it actually end up hindering team team one because Pulsar has been the number one architect of doom One badly damaged Atlantis. One Atlantis on about 66% health. The rest are doing fine. But air coverage firmly in Gembler's hands over here. And Gembler now just spitting out batch after batch of skimmers. There's torpedo bombers and sending them after these Atlantis who... No real choice but to turn tail and run. How is that little mini base doing in the top left hand corner? It's pretty solid. Paragon is up get the feeling it's not going to last long. <laughs> it's got strategic missile defense nearby. It'll be just on the edge of the shield. I don't even know if Team 2 have any nukes. Just no way they're keeping out to scat this. Sorcery thinks they can withstand. I do not. If the next volley doesn't get it, the one after that very likely will. It's particularly bad. <laughs> that volley. Maybe it's going to longer than that. So I'm sitting here with popcorn, waiting. Waiting. Waiting for the inevitable explosion, which we're basically going to miss because I need to check out what's going on elsewhere. One hour threshold passed. But feeling very much like it's all academic at this point. Momo down here with his Vespers. Momentum. Moving leftwards in the lake. And now we've got that more accurate rapid fire focusing in on that area as well. out from Momo and from Rafe. You're going to get some control Ks. There goes Dalio with the control K. As he bows out. Talking about how things could have gone differently 
And uh, yeah, there were a couple of areas where it really could have gone either way. It just came down to that exchange when there were rapid fires up on both sides. Both sides had a paragon. It was just about the sequence of events of, of which went at what time. That was crazy, though. Absolutely crazy. Bloody Peru bows out. all of his aircraft for the lulls. Rafe bows out. A little bit of a desync at the end there, but we won't worry about that. Although it would be hilarious if uh, Jukebox or Momo managed to <laughs> achieve something here. I don't know what that could possibly be at this point. ASF's tangle. Up Jukebox's base. As finally those battleships from Danny sail into the mouth of the river. Torpedo bombers back here from Gembler. Haven't heard a lot from Gembler over the game. But it doesn't mean he wasn't providing a valuable service. Gembler focusing in on those Vespers, finishing them off. Momo located by the Barracudas from Danny. He looks like he might get himself a kill. Maybe. Momo's making for the land. Doesn't want to give away any free cash. Oh. Not going to make it. Almost made it. Those torpedoes at the end were literally skipping across the sand at the bottom of the very shallow waves. One million one hundred mass on the map. Look at that reclaim. Carnage. Certainly carnage, and jukebox hero, the last one left, squirreled away in the top left-hand corner. Oh, everybody just quit and left him in it. <laughs> so technically he won! Hey! What was he doing up here? Build himself a stealth gen, attack missile launcher, and omni, some SAMs. He was moving along. Not sure what he was going to achieve there, but just having fun, I guess. Wow, that was mental. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. As I say, Dual Gap, not always my cup of tea. They're often very static, static games, as that one was. But that was some highly entertaining play between the game enders there. I hope you'll agree. Certainly found it amusing uh, to watch. Uh, that's it for me today, guys. If you want some extra content and you haven't already uh, joined up to Patreon, there is an extra cast on there already, guys. So do go and check that out. Uh, just for the price of a dollar. Uh, Patreon wanted to charge you three dollars. I want to you to add. They were saying, don't make your minimum pledge. Little thing come up saying, don't make your minimum pledge below 2 99 We don't recommend it. But I went, you know what? I want it to be as accessible as possible. So all uh, additional cast content through Patreon will be available for the bargain price of one dollar a month. Please consider going to check it out, guys. Uh, I'm going to be aiming for between two to four casts uh, a week on Patreon as well. It won't affect this channel. This channel is going to carry on because the name of the game is all about promotion as well. Um, so I want to keep growing this channel as much as possible. So more in entertaining casts like this are coming your way shortly. Uh, but until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. I'm not going to be doing an anti-spoiler at the end of this one because I've got babysitting duties to do immediately. Uh, so I haven't got time for a game, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going to sign this one off here. But until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.